Hello everybody, Axel Wilkinson here to look at the basics of green screen compositing in HitFilm. So to create a green screen composite, the first thing we need to do is import our elements into HitFilm. This will include both a green screen foreground and a background element. I'll be using a still image as a background in this case, but if you're using video, that's perfectly fine. The process for creating the composite is exactly the same. So now I have my foreground and background imported. Let's select the portion of the foreground that we want to use. I'm going to select 10 seconds worth and we can add that to the editor timeline. Now in order to add our background to this composite, we need to create a composite shot. So right click the green screen shot on the editor and choose make composite shot from the menu. We can click convert to accept those settings and a new composite shot is created containing our green screen clip. Now we can select our background and add it to the composite below the green screen clip. You can see that green placement line helps you to see whether you're going to drop the new layer above or below the existing green screen layer. So make sure and drop it below. And we won't be able to see it yet because it's hidden behind our foreground layer until we remove the green screen. So now we have our two elements in place in layers one and two, and we need to remove the green screen from our foreground by applying a color difference key. So we select that effect, drag it from the effects panel to our foreground layer, and you can see that automatically most of our green is removed. Now the default settings haven't quite removed all of the green, and we have a few other extraneous bits. You can see the floor over here, and then these light stands on this side that need to be removed as well. So to remove all of those, let's select the rectangular mask tool and we'll just drag a mask containing the portion of that layer that we want to keep. There we go. Now we can fine tune the settings of our color difference key to remove the rest of the green. Let's adjust the min until all of the green disappears. We'll bring that up into the upper 80s and then we'll adjust the max, we'll bring that down just a touch to eliminate any transparent areas in our subject. While you're adjusting the key, the view mat tick box can make it very easy to see what you're doing as you make those adjustments. In fact, if I undo that, so we're back to our default settings, and click the view mat, you can see all these gray areas. And what we're trying to do is make the subject solid white and everything else solid black to get a clean key. So as we increase this minimum setting, you can see how all of that gray area disappears and turns black. But you can see how we have a few transparent areas down in the foot and the lower portion of the robe of our subject. And so by reducing the max setting, we can make those more solid so that we end up with a very clean key. You can tick this view map box on and off anytime you want in order to double check the accuracy of the key you've created. So now we have our two layers, but their positions obviously need adjusting as our subject is kind of floating there and our background is much too big. So to start with, let's adjust the scale of our background layer. We'll reduce that until it just fills our frame. And then if we select our foreground layer, we'll go back to our selection tool and we can move him so that he's standing in the hallway. Now we'll need to adjust his scale a little bit as well just to make him match the size of the scene a little bit better. And there we have it. In just a couple of minutes in Hit Film, we have completed a basic green screen composite. Now obviously there's still a number of things that could be done to fine tune and improve this composite as far as the way the colors match in the two layers and so forth. But for the basic process of combining a green screen element and a background, it's really that simple. And that uses only a couple of tools which are available in both the standard and ultimate versions of HitFilm. So no matter what version you have, this process up till now is the same. Now the rest of what needs done will vary a bit from one shot to the next, depending on what you're compositing. But we'll take a few minutes now to improve this composite and look at some of the tools and techniques that HitFilm has available to help you to do so. So the first thing we're going to do is add spill removal to our foreground. And this is going to remove any 
green areas around the edges of our subject. As you look, you can see a little bit of green under his arm there and along the edge of that arm. And so by adding a spill removal to our foreground, you can see that those traces of green that are left are very quickly eliminated. Now typically the default settings for the spill removal will do nicely, but if you find the colors of your subject being changed or modified, then you may want to try switching from extended suppression to standard or decreasing the strength until you get an acceptable result. Okay, next we're going to want to clean up the edges of our foreground a bit. You can see how they're a little bit jagged. There's kind of a stair-stepping thing going on along those edges. And so we'll want to remove that and smooth those edges off. Now, if you're in Hit Film Standard, the best way to do this is to add a chroma UV blur to the footage. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you add it before the color difference key. If we add it after, it doesn't have any effect on the footage. But when we drag that before, you can see how the edges are nicely smoothed by applying that effect. I'm going to adjust the radius of the blur to 1 for this particular clip. And you can see we very quickly have cleaned up our edges there to improve the composite. Now I'm going to turn that chroma UV blur off. And we'll look at a tool found in HitFilm Ultimate called the Matte Cleaner. I'll zoom back in a bit using the mouse wheel. Now in the Matte Cleaner we have a control for smoothing the edges, a control to feather or soften the edges, and a choke control to trim a tiny bit off the edges or bring them in toward the center of our subject. So for this particular clip I'm going to smooth the edges a bit and then add just one pixel of feathering to soften them a touch and that gives us a decent edge. We might want to smooth that just a little bit more. There we go and you've got a nice clean edge to our subject. The next thing I want to adjust is the color. Our subject here has pretty warm lighting when he was filmed and the background is very cool so we need to adjust the color of one or the other so that they match better. I'm going to use the color temperature effect and I'm going to apply it to the background and then reduce that a bit to warm the background up so that it matches the colors of our subject a little bit better. Okay, the next thing I noticed is at the beginning of this clip especially, there's a hair light on the subject where the top of his head is kind of illuminated as he walks under a light. And there isn't really a logical source for that light within the scene we're creating. And so I'm going to eliminate that bright area on the top of his head. So to do that, I'm going to use a gradient We'll choose the color gradient, we'll apply that to our foreground, and immediately you can see it looks terrible, but we'll need to make some adjustments to improve those results. So the first thing that I'm going to do is move the start position so it's just above our subject's head, and then move the end position until it's kind of on his forehead there, below the bright area in his hair. Now I'm going to change the blend mode on the gradient to multiply. And what that will do is make sure that only the dark areas of the gradient have any effect on the underlying image. So we've done that. We can see the color gradient though is still affecting the entire image. So what we need to do is increase the opacity to 100%. And now we can see only the top of his head is being affected by that gradient. So now we've removed that light, and as we play back the scene, he's matching the background much better. Our shot's looking pretty good, although it could certainly benefit from a few further adjustments. In particular, we need to add a shadow that our subject would be casting onto the floor, and then also the shadows that the pillars would be casting onto him as he walks by. I'm not going to cover those shadows in this video, as we are focusing on the green screen aspect, but make sure and keep watching the HitFilm YouTube channel for a tutorial on creating shadows in the future. So please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss those tutorials coming up. And thanks again for watching.